Hi friends, this is Chris with Josephine's Designs. I am back with our weekly gratitude project. I want to say thank you for giving me a day's grace. Um, I will probably be a little bit late on today's Bible journaling. Um, probably won't post it till tomorrow and I probably won't even get a video till tomorrow. Um, I had an appointment today and I knew I had to get so much stuff done before I could get to that appointment. And I hope you guys will just understand. So this health journey requires those different kinds of appointments in my life. And I just have sometimes to need to attend to that. Um, something came up this week with my, my knee and my leg. And um, it was, <laughs> it was somebody in the medical world saying something they should have never said. And so it was warming at first and it did impact me. And, but the more I thought it out, the more I reasoned it out, I knew that they were speaking out loud and they shouldn't have been. And, um, but I still had to attend to it today, but everything's good. No blood clots. <laughs> That's all good. <laughs> so, um, that we know of, but, but yeah, 99.999%. Yeah, no, no blood clot. So, um, I'm back. It is like 4.30 in the afternoon, so forgive me. I'm going to try to get this posted by 7. I've got the Traeger loaded. We have not eaten today. I had a little bit of, what I have? I had a little bit of a bite of a, like a deli meat while I was loading it on the grill. So, anyways, that posting will probably be on Instagram sometime this weekend of what I'm cooking out there because it is crazy. My, my daughter came out and she goes, that is a lot of food and so she hasn't even seen I just went and did all this other stuff so it was really good but um, we are hungry um, I did meet with my friend who is helping me in my journey and she gave me a lot of good suggestions as well so it all went really well and I'm very thankful for that and I'm so thankful for her so if you want to know about that friend, she does stuff online, you're very welcome to go to my healthylivingforhim.com and I think I have some information on there about her. And she helps people all over the United States and I would think all over the world with the internet the way it is now. So, you know, that internet. So let's pray. But it is a day of Thanksgiving. Um, I spent a couple of days just kind of like second guessing some things and not happy with um what somebody had said um due to my health and um I just need to take a deep breath trust God and know that he's guiding my steps and that people are overreacting to something that was not they they needed to stay in their wheelhouse not go out into another area of the medical profession and make those statements and things like that. And so whenever you're in those situations, you need to seek that out. You need to get the help you need, but you can't go to one doctor for everything. Sometimes you really do have to go and take the time and go to somebody extra and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. We all have those um, situations in our life, especially as we get older. So, it's good. God is good. He's guiding everything. I know I'm getting so much better and I'm so thankful, but, um, yeah. So let's talk about gratitude. Let's pray and we'll get started because this is really a good week. So let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for today. Thank you for all your answers. Um, and thank you for the opportunity to go to you, to find answers, to seek your way, to seek your will to step out and trust you and praise you and thank you. And even when it is apple cart turnover and crazy things are said, um, help us to find peace in you. And I thank you for that peace that you gave me before I could even get answers today. And Lord, help me when these things happen and my friends right now here, that when we hear these crazy things that we can instantly trust you and instantly have peace and instantly know that you have a plan and a will and a way and even though i knew that um the more i sat and thought about what that person was saying it was alarming at best and it was er worthy at best and um and sure enough it was basically wrong so god we love you we praise you we bow down before you we thank you 
And Lord, as we move into this study today, each one of us comes with something that's just off or askew or upside down or difficult or frustrating in our lives. And I ask right now that we can lay that to the side and just give you praise and thank you. So God, and to learn from your, your word and from this message and help us to serve you well. Lord, we love you. We love you. We love you. I pray for each and every person here. that They can hear your voice this day and know you in a very intimate walk and in an intimate um, relationship because you created us for fellowship. That's what we were created for, to be in fellowship with you, Lord. And I am so grateful and so thankful for that, that you would care about me and each one of my friends when there's just millions of people through history and yet you still do. You, you know us individually. You know every hair on our head. You know every bird in the sky. You know every ant on the ground because you created all of this. Thank you, God. Thank you. So, Lord, as we come to you, teach our hearts what you want us to hear. Let this be pleasing to you, God, and help us to serve you well. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, guys. So, weekly gratitude project. So, I put a little time in on this scripture. So, one thing I notice in this particular project, it's going to have not as much scripture as I want. So, I'm going to research scripture just a little bit more. So, I'll talk to you a little bit about it as we go through. So, gratitude heals. My wayward children, says the Lord, come back to me and I will heal your wayward hearts. And this is Jeremiah 3.22. So let's read it in the Amplified. And it says, return, O faithless sons, says the Lord, I will heal your unfaithfulness. They answer, behold, we come to you for you are the Lord, our God. So. Do you ever feel like you're on this path? And you just can't get off it. You know, what is wrong? Why can't I stop doing this thing? Or why, why do I keep sinning or getting caught up in sin or getting frustrated or whatever it is that God's working with you on? I feel that way. So let's see what the, the lesson has to say today. Now, again, I'm going to read this one more time. My wayward children, says the Lord, come back to me and I will heal your wayward hearts. So in this season in Jeremiah... People didn't go to God. Um, remember, you had to go through the tabernacle, through the priest, through the whole thing. So that instant healing that, that you can now have as far as going before the Father, praying and asking for forgiveness, asking for healing. Um, we need to know that there was a difference in this period of time, but it is still applicable so let's keep going. Sometimes it feels like our anxious minds are the control center of our bodies. When our hearts are stuck on what brings us down, they keep us down emotionally and spiritually. Gratitude is a way back up, a step forward toward God, a path to our healing hearts. Um, one of the things I will say, gratitude is invaluable when you are going through difficult times. That's why I always say we give God, and scripture tells us to praise him in the good and the bad. But the other part of that is that I believe gratitude heals. And one of the other ways in this, it kind of fits in. So hang with me, serving others. When you serve someone else, when you get beyond yourself, it's amazing. And I will tell you, I'm going to say that. And you don't do it to get gratitude, but nine times out of 10, somebody's going to say, hey, that was really nice of you. Or, oh, thank you so much. Or, Wow, that was great. Um, gratitude heals. Gratitude heals. Not only must start in our heart, we must start in our heart, but then we must pass that along. And sometimes God blesses us back with that. So there's just another thought. Can you think of ways your heart needs to heal? Yes, I just shared mine in the last two days. Are you battling discouragement, disappointment, or discontent? And one of the great things about this friend of mine, she was really great about saying, don't listen to that. Focus on this. Know that you are doing your research, your work, your, 
You know what's happening with your body. You need to trust. And you've done your homework. You're not, you know, you're, you're basically, you're smart. Don't, don't second guess it. Remember the wins. So, and I mean W-I-N-S. And Satan wants to trip us up. Now, I'm just saying that Satan wants to trip us up. He'll trip us up through friends, through family, through bosses, through co-workers, through people in our Christian communities. Yes, I'm going to say that. Because sometimes we say something and we mean all, all the well for that person. Or we say something and we're not even realizing that they're taking it wrong. I have a couple of you in my life that are hypersensitive and one in particular that it doesn't matter how you say it if they're in not a good frame of mind everything is negative everything you say is wrong you've never said anything positive and you're just like wow are you kidding me I have poured so much in you are you kidding me and I've come to recognize that there are some people you just have to let God let God Deal with them, let God love them, let God heal their hearts, let God heal their minds. And I'm saying that, heal their minds and recognize that their frustration in life does not need to be yours. Now, if you flat out did something and you offended them and it was true sin, that's one thing. If you said something and you were meaning the best for them and they took it wrong, guess what? You can be made aware of that. You can apologize and say, I'm so sorry. That was never my intent. And this was my intent. And But there are just some people that hear things the way they want to hear it. It doesn't matter how many times you say, no, 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 that's not what I meant. I mean, it's black and white what I meant. But some people just struggle with that. And so you just have to kind of let that go. You still have to love them, but you have to let that go. And that's okay. It's okay. Let's keep moving because I think, you know, there's another person in my life that has kind of been counseled for this area and they keep saying things like, but you're like the sweetest person. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I have my bad days too. I can be grumpy. I can be frustrated. I can be, I can be, you know, snotty and rude just like anybody else. But their point is, but you would never intentionally do that. And it's like, you and I know that, but until they get that in their brain, they may never know that. And that's okay. I can only do what I can do. And I have to keep checking myself before the Lord saying, as much as I don't want to be discouraged and I don't want to be disappointed and I don't want to be discontented, God, help me not be that for others. And if I am, show me. So I change my heart, oh God, change my heart, oh God. And either change my heart that if they react wrong, it doesn't affect me or change my heart that I need to change my behavior. What is it, God? And there are those that will manipulate that and make you feel badly for it. So I just want to say that outright because, you know, I'm a half glass or glass half full kind of gal. And I don't want to think that of people. But, you know, some people it takes 20 years before you say, wow, I've been played for 20 years. <laughs> I've been played for five. I've been played for three days. I've been played for, you understand what I'm saying? And that's okay because that's a part of our journey to learn, to listen to the Holy Spirit, to understand that I can't fix everyone, nor do I want to. And that's, that's real. That's real. Okay. Name three things you're grateful for today. Then set a timer for two minutes and focus only on those things. How did this practice make you feel? I always go back to Colossians 3, 2, keep my mind on things above and not on the things of this earth. And that's a lot of what this practice is. It's focusing on the Lord, focusing on what is pure and lovely and good and knowing, knowing that God is good and God is in control and God is taking care of things. And even in my frustration yesterday, and I was frustrated. I mean, I was boohooing frustrated and yeah, I was talking to my husband about it. He said, you know, because a friend had asked, do you cry? And I was just like, no, not really. And he was like, but you cry all the time. And I said, no, I don't. Um, I cry about other things, but I don't let the deep stuff come out all the time because it's, it's too painful. 
I will be honest, it's not a good answer, but sometimes I feel like it is too painful and I'm afraid if I start it, I can't stop it. Do you ever feel that way? And so it's okay to share all that with God and God wants us to let that out. He wants us to work through it with him and work through it in the word. But one of the things, and, and work through it, you know, maybe he's got an, an incredible Christian support person, um, whether it be a Christian counselor, Christian friend, um, you know, whoever it is. And sometimes we just sit at his feet and we give it to him. And yesterday I had reached out for my support person and they, it went straight to voicemail. And so I was like, okay, God, it's you and me today. And then within, I don't know, four hours, that person called me. And their phone had been off, and they were just like, oh, I didn't even know you called. And it was just one of those things, and it was fantastic timing, because I wasn't just so, ah, at that moment, I was able to talk about it. And it's okay to go through those emotions. I think it's unhealthy if we suppress them. But do we dwell in it? Do we live in it? Do we cycle, cycle, cycle through it? And sometimes the situation is that you're with this person all the time and you don't have a choice. And so you have to, it's a cycle. It's just this constant cycle. But when we get to that point where we recognize that it's not going to work, I am never going to be everything you want me to be. And, um, and neither will you be for me. And if we can accept that and move forward and have a relationship and press on, you know, and sometimes you can say that to the other person and sometimes you can't. But you got to find that contentment in yourself when you're dealing in the, when you're dealing with a situation like that. Now, if it's toxic, and I've had just bloody raw toxic relationships, I mean it. I have had some of the most toxic people in my life. Um, sometimes it's better that you move on, and, and but you have to seek God. You can't just decide. Okay, that's it. I'm out of here. I mean, phew, there was one relationship that went on for 18 years. And I heavily worked so hard at that relationship. And God finally just all but slapped me down and said, are you listening to me? I said, stop. Because it was affecting everything in my life and all those around me. And it was so toxic. And it was endangering people in my life. And I had to finally come to a point where I recognized that it's okay. When God says enough is enough. And he tells us, and you're doing it for the sake of a witness. You're doing it for the sake of, of healing and restoration, all those things. If a relationship, and you finally have to come to a point when God says enough is enough, and I mean obey me now, you have to obey him. And there's a level of healing that comes out of that is beyond all words. And then there's gratitude. There's gratitude for healing in those toxic relationships, even if it's just on your side. Let's keep going. How might practicing an exercise like this regularly help your heart to heal? One of the things I've recently come to understand, and I'm going to apply this here and forgive me. So in my health journey, I am trying to not have spiked, you know, spiked blood sugar. I'm trying to keep everything pretty, you know, neutral. I did not realize, this tells you how dumb I am. <laughs> okay, guys, that when you get upset or you get stressed or you get whatever, it can cause your blood sugar to spike. And that's not great, right? Especially if you're trying to get your body to heal and all those things. So yesterday, my little, I recognized, wow, I really don't want that to happen again. What do I need to do? And I recognize that there's a way to properly go through this, through mourning, through frustration, through all of those things. And one of the things my friend said today, and she didn't even know it affected me, was that, you know, she, she made a comment, you know, now that I'm doing this, I don't, I don't yell anymore. I don't, I don't do all those things anymore. And I was just like, that's interesting. And I can see that. I can see that when you feel so badly, things hit you and you're already raw. And so you're going to react. But finding a practice where you spend two, you know, two minutes, Two minutes, it's just two minutes, you know. That's that uh, jingle all the way, you know. Anyways, two, three minutes, whatever he said. Anyways, um, focus on the things that we're grateful for. It's huge. It's so huge. And I knew after I had spoken to this 
Christian confidant, friend, counselor, whatever you want to say, that God gave me that person for a reason. And had that person call me out of the blue for a reason. And as much as I was able to support them in an issue here recently, they were able to support me. And nine times out of ten, guys, I have the habit of whoever's supporting me, I turn around and try to support them. <laughs> Just that mindset. And I'm okay with that because I think that's what it's all about here, guys. So, my wayward children, says the Lord, come back to me and I will heal your wayward hearts. Remember in Jeremiah's time... People couldn't go directly to God. We can. And he says, I will heal your wayward hearts. So as I got through that process yesterday and the day before, and I had to think about it. I had to let it process because it was twofold. It was two different people that said some things that they needed to and, and did some things. I mean, Flat did something with a very hurtful intent. And he, there's just people like that. And... I had to say, thank you, God. You're teaching me a lot in this process. And I don't understand why. I don't know why. I don't like it. I don't. I don't like it. But I'm grateful because you're teaching me. And today when I had, you know, had to do what I had to do, and then I then met my friend, um, she was so good at saying things like, you're going to have to listen and not listen. You're going to have to always be sure you're medically healthy, of course. But then people say things because they say things. And I thought, oh, you're so right. Why am I so dumb? You're so right. <laughs> but I knew that. I knew that. So, gratitude heals. My wayward children, says the Lord, come back to me and I will heal your wayward ways. When we get our minds caught, um, I saw this thing on, I, I watch sometimes the Mark and Kelly or, you know, the Kelly and Mark or whatever, Kelly and Ryan, Kelly and Mark, wherever we're at now. I mean, I watch William Kathy Lee and Regis because I was, remember, I was, I was bed bound with pregnancies and whatnot. So, and I really enjoyed Kathy Lee Gifford. Um, she, Regis and Kathy Lee, were, that was huge because she was a Christian. But one of the things I saw while I was getting some things done was make a list. And I wish I had it out here, but things you can control, things you can't control. And there was one other in that list as you're becoming anxious about something. And, you know, look at can we really affect change or is it just going to happen anyways? I mean, we can't make people change. We can't make people say or do things that they should do. We can only encourage them. We can love them. We can pray for them. Um, and my friend and I today, we're talking about something and that kind of came up in regards to another subject. And the point being is their time will come and it, and it, and like I, I told her, I said, it's their choice. And it was like, yeah, it's their choice. And, you know, we can want the best for someone. We can see the best for someone, but it is their journey. So when somebody's in your life and you become anxious or hurt or frustrated or whatever it be, know that gratitude heals. So not only do we make, need to make that three column list and I'll, I'll put below what the three things were, um, before I post this, um, we can make that list of what we can actually affect and not affect, etc. But then we can also begin to make a list of what we're grateful for. And sometimes it is gratitude for going through that difficult thing or dealing with that stinky person or maybe getting to be that person. I mean, look, how many times has somebody tried to say something to you and you're like, oh, oh, you get all ruffled and you're just like, they don't know what they're talking about. But yet God used it later to affect your heart for better, for change. And, you know, but the initial reaction may be harsh, may be irritated, may be you say something you shouldn't say, you know, just like that doctor who did. And you just have to trust that God's in control. Know who you're accountable to. Know who has your best interest at heart. And have grace and mercy for those who may or may not.
fit into that category. There is someone in my life who brings up this one thing every single time we talk about that I'm getting heavy, uh, getting heavy, getting healthy. And it's like, it's a preconceived notion that I think comes from a couple of places that because of their own struggles in life, they have deemed this as to who I am. And I've almost am at the point where I'm going to say, you've said it enough. I've heard you repeatedly. Now you're just offensive. And I think it's okay to say that. And, and you can say, I'm saying this in love, but I really don't want to hear that anymore. And you've given me a lot to think of for X amount of however many times I've been saying it or for years or for months or for whatever. I've done the work. And, and I have with this one person and I have done the work and I think you need to let that go. This is now your problem, not mine, because your preconceived notion is your preconceived notion, whether it be real or unreal. And I think we can say things like that in love and then we can just be grateful that for somebody like me, that I could say something like that and say it in love and say it kindly. Um, you know, there are times I've had to tell people, no, that's not real. That's not true. That's not appropriate. That's not kind. That's not, and it's okay to say those things as long as we say it in love and we don't, and we aren't saying you're just a big meanie. You know, we don't need to say things that way, but we can say, no, thank you. And I think if you think about what, when gratitude heals, Think about when you're saying, no, thank you. You're still saying thank you, but you're saying no. No. Don't you know that God says that to us? Like, honey, I hear you, but no. Thank you for asking me, but no thank you. Can't you hear God saying that to you in your walk with him? I hear that a lot. And especially now, because I have all engines firing, my brain's going all the time, which I'm thankful for. Um, but I'm thankful, you know, um, I'm thankful. And I'm thankful that he loves me enough to say, no, thank you. No, thank you. Obey me. Hear what I'm saying to you. I need you to go. I need you to go this way. I need you to obey me here. No, thank you. Don't go that way. Obey me this way. And I may be saying it in such a way you're thinking, well, I'm not a three-year-old. But can't you hear the Heavenly Father speaking to you like that in love? Not to talk down to you, to encourage you. To say, I value enough to have manners, to thank you, but still to say enough, no. No. So gratitude heals our heart. Even when God's saying, no, thank you. It still heals our heart because he cares. He loves us enough to tell us the truth. All of that. So I kind of went off in a couple different directions with this week's study because when I did my research, there were other things about that passage that, um, I don't know. I, I feel like maybe it was covered. Maybe it wasn't covered. Um, it, the history of it's interesting. So if you go back and you research the history, you read the, the verses around it, you'll see more about what was going on in Jeremiah's day. But the, the words for the intent of the author of this week were good and very good and very applicable and very applicable to that portion of the scripture. Um, I just like the whole, I like the full meal deal. I don't want the partial. And so when I went through it and was preparing, that's how God was speaking to my heart. And I hope that encouraged you today. So if this encouraged you and you want to encourage anybody else, just pass it on. Give it to somebody else. Forward this. Feel free. Um, like and leave a comment. It will help this video to the algorithm where people will see it. And that's always a really, um, a really good help for the channel. And not only that, when people are struggling, what a blessing that is to be encouraged. And that's what this channel is about. So Let's encourage as many people as we can. Pray for, love them. Love them when they're making us anxious or frustrated or struggling. Let's pray for those who persecute us. Scripture tells us, pray for our enemies. And a lot of these people aren't our enemies, but some can be. And 
So we have to pray for them. And we have to show them love because John tells us they'll know us by our love. And we have to show them love and trust that God is going to use that and encourage them. All right, friends, I think my family's getting ready to go on the roof and protect the roof. So I've got to get the food off the grill and let's pray. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this lesson today. Help us to have gratitude in difficult times. Help us to let gratitude heal our hearts. Help us to use that when we are frustrated. Help us to focus on things above, not on the things of this earth. Let us be focused on you when things around us are going sideways. And it's okay to be sad when something goes sideways. It's okay to work through those feelings because the worst thing we can do is stuff it down. And I've definitely done my fair share of stuffing. And I've also done my fair share of being repeatedly shocked by bad behavior um, from individuals. And I don't know how to undo that in myself, but I do know that you know God. And I pray that the same for my friends here, that they can also find gratitude and healing and gratitude in difficult situations, difficult um, things that happen or difficult people in our lives. And God, I give you each person here today. I pray that you bless them for this time of focusing on you, trying to learn how to work through difficulties in life and still yet trying to learn how to grow closer to you. Lord, we give this time to you. We pray that you would bless this time in all who hear this message and that they would be encouraged and come to know you by Savior or as Savior and that they um, can just better know you, God. Have a relationship with you and fellowship with you and seek you in these difficult times. Lord, we praise your name. We praise your name. We give thanks to you. We give thanks to you in the difficult times. We give thanks to you in the stinky situations. We give thanks to you for the people who say things that maybe they shouldn't say and help us not to be those people. Help us to be people who can love and encourage and forgive us when we fail and we are the ones that cause other people to stumble. Lord, help us to be careful and guard our mouths and help us to be a light for you in all that we do. Lord, we praise your name. We praise your name. We praise your name. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Okay, guys, I'm going to let you go. I will probably come back tomorrow. Hey, honey, could you bring me a plate? I'll take up dinner. Um, sorry, guys. <laughs> She's walking past, so I'm going to grab it. Um, I will come back tomorrow with the, oh, I've got something on my fingernail. Who knows? Probably something. Paint, food, who knows? I've been cooking. Um, sorry, that was kind of gross. Sorry, it's probably it's probably paint. I had paint on earlier. Um, but I will be back probably tomorrow with the Bible journaling. And I also have a healthy living for him. That will be up at 530. Thank you, baby doll. And so there you go. We're going to go get dinner. I wish you were here. I could feed you. Um, but I will, 5.30 a.m. is when Healthy Living for Him comes up, and then by 7, I'll have the gratitude journal up, and I also wanted to say, guys, um, I still have kits, and I will have a video up on the Bible Journaling Camp. I'm planning Sunday evening, so, um, the kits have changed due to, uh, mistakes with that stuff in there, and that printer and whatnot, and it's okay. Um, I think this may work better for everyone, and I think it will be even more cost-effective for me. So I hope you guys are okay with that. But if you still want a kit, kits go out Monday. Lord willing, and the creek don't rise, and the internet doesn't go out, kits will go out Monday. Um, and even if you are out of the country, you and you're part of the channel, you're 18 years or older, and you are subscribed to this channel, you can still receive an email digital kit. Um, and if you live in the United States, you will get also a mail packet as well. But you must sign up for the Bible Journaling Camp May 29th through June 2nd. And then June 3rd, there will be a Zoom in order to receive the kits, in order to re participate in the Zoom. You just have to send me an email. That's it. It's free. No money. It's free. <laughs> so... Um, and no strings. There's nothing else. And um, it's just an opportunity to fellowship 
to grow in the Lord. Um, the videos will be up every day. This is not a closed camp. I mean, it's not a closed class. The videos will come up every day. Um, the only thing that will be closed is the Zoom. And you must be a part of the camp. And if there are two or more in my name also, there I will be also. So if we just have two of us, that's okay. We can still have fellowship. We can go through the project. We can go through the little bit of scripture. And then we can just think on things above and encourage each other in the Lord. And that will be a blessing. And you don't have to have your video up. You don't even have to talk if a lot of people are there. Um, it's great if you talk, but you don't have to have, you can have your picture up. Um, I'm in this one Bible study and there's this sweetest gal. I've been in with it been in it for a while she never puts her face up and i'm always just want to say take your picture down for just a minute i want to see your face because i have a feeling it's an old picture but i'm good i mean i totally understand i've never said it to her and i would never say it to her but if you want to participate in the smaller zoom you could totally do that and it, it won't get out there it's just going to be with us us chickens as we talk on things above and so anyways, I'm excited. We're going to be talking about the promises of God. And we're also going to um, talk about how do we share those promises with friends and, and neighbors and family and all of that. And so, um, and that is just a bonus. That's the bonus part. So the focus was always going to be the promises of God, but then there is the next step. And I just, I just could not leave that out. I think it's important. And as somebody who is painfully shy, I think there's something to share in that. So anyways, if I can talk to people about the Lord in public, yeah. I Today, when I met my friend, I met her at the coffee shop, and the manager and I got to chatting. I think she's the manager. Anyways, we got to chatting. We know each other's name. She has my email. We started talking. She's like... I need to talk to you more. Are you going to come back? And I was like, well, you met me before and now you've met me again. And she was just so sweet. And I said, of course I'll come back. And I said, here, I'll give you my phone number. You can call me, you know, because we were talking about children and education. And then I said, well, I'm a believer. So I don't know what you believe, but I'm a Christian. And here's my thoughts on this. And, um, and everybody around her was listening. Everyone who worked there was listening. And I just thought, you know, she was a Christian and I just thought, hmm, hmm, God is using this, this shy, painfully awkward, not slick and pretty person he was using today in a public setting and it was joyful and it was joy in the journey. So why would I not want to share that with you? So, um, yeah, I'm excited. I can't wait to go back. I love their tea and coffee. My husband's always like, right, right, right. So expensive. But I think once a month, I think it's okay. So, all right, friends, I pray. And you know what? I, I even, um, I, I, I have a gift card for that and I just want to keep it tucked away. Um, I'm going to give that as a gift card to my friend. Um, but I'm also going, I kept, I, I got a, I, I've received a gift card. And if you are in the central Texas area, I highly recommend Summer Moon. It's a coffee shop. Um, the one in our town, we're in Lockhart. Um, I, either the manager, the, I think the owners are Christian, but it was just like hands down. I'll support that any day, any day. I don't get as big of a green iced tea, but I am thankful for what I do get. And I love it. And I'm I'm thankful. And that's what's, you know, and if I get to sit and talk about things above and somebody gets to hear it and, and God touches their heart, what a blessing that is. Nobody ever moves away from when I'm in a restaurant or in a cafe or in a, wherever I am. Nobody, no, nobody ever runs away. That's what blows me away. And people sometimes follow me to my car in a good way to find out more. Why, why, why are you this way? Where, what, what, you know, why? And I've been able to share the Lord with so many people because of that. And what, it, and it wasn't anything more that we just had a conversation about Jesus. So, um, and why I believe what I believe. And you know what? I've never had anybody get angry. I've never had anybody do anything ugly. I've never had anybody not take a tract um, or a Bible. Sometimes I keep Bibles in my car with a tract in them. Um, I've never had anybody get angry. So come to the camp. 
let me share with you my thoughts on it. And I've been through all the different things. You can go through churches and, you know, all the different things. Um, but my way is a very um, laid back, you know, um, overly sensitive way to share my journey. And again, that's what you see on Healthy Living for Him. Uh, a friend of my friend today, I said, well, you know, I tell my friends if they do X, Y, Z, you know, do what you're supposed to do. I support you. And she looked at me like, mm -mm, don't support that. And I said, I have to support them. And she's like, I got it. I said, yeah. I said, I mean, my journey is my journey. Their journey is their journey. And if I can just love and support them, isn't that my job? And she was like, yeah, you're right. You know, I mean, kind of one of those great conversations where you're just like, oh, but I mean, that look on her face was like, no. And I said, it's okay. It's okay. Um, you know, in time, if it's supposed to be where they're supposed to change with life, God will change that. And I think that that's true as we share about Jesus, you know, whatever we do, we need to do it in love. And even if somebody's being naughty in our life, like I said, we just need to say, I've heard you. Thank you. We're moving on. You know, it's okay. I've heard you. Thank you. I appreciate your thought and your concern. I'm moving on. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So, all right, friends, there was a lot covered today. <laughs> Gratitude heals. That's what we got to hang on to today. All right, friends. Um, like I said, like, subscribe, leave a comment. It helps us, helps this channel, helps it grow helps this information about Jesus as Savior get out there and hopefully encourage somebody else. All right, friends, I pray your weekend is blessed, creative, and lovely. Keep serving Jesus well. He loves you. And as much as I love you, he loves you beyond all words loves you. No matter what, he still loves you. Okay, friends, I'll be talking to you soon. I'll talk to you later. Y'all take care. Bye.